What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, how you doing? I am good, and I'm feeling encouraged every day. I check Chong Chi's box office, and every day people seem to be going out. And I'm just keeps our fingers crossed that the rest of, we get in the rest of our schedule. But this has been been good. Signs are good right now. Venom, you, Eternals, Spider Man. We yeah. get all get all of them. That's what we yeah. want. Yeah. Have you gone back to see Shang Chi? Uh, not for a third time. I will go see it a third time. Probably going to be next week. But uh, but yes, that's that is okay. the plan. But yeah, no, it's track it's tracking well enough that now I feel pretty confident we're going to get our full schedule this this fall and winter I, I, on on theaters only. Theaters only. At least two percent of the box office is Brian, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> He's bringing friends, family. Every... Well, no, I mean, hey, listen, <laughs> I mean they. You know, the, the, the Asian community in the U.S. came out. I think I read yeah, oh, it. 2X, 2X, any other MCU movie. Um, hey, but I said this a long time ago. When Shang-Chi was first announced, I said, Shang-Chi is going to have the same support that Black Panther had when it came out. And, you know, and it's showing it right now. Um, not a lot of news this week, but we're... You know, you know how we do. We always make it interesting. Um, some a trailer came out today, the Matrix trailer. We're gonna be talking about that, talking about James Gunn, and the rumor that Bane is gonna be be appearing in. Uh, I believe it is a peace peacemaker. Yeah. Um, Andrew Garfield is denying Charlie Cox. They're all denying that they're in this film. It's like. Who keeps asking these questions, right? It's like, stop it already. Um, the Eternals and Spider-Man supposedly are, are, are happening around the same time, which is interesting. Oscar Isaacs calls um, Marvel's uh, Moon Knight groundbreaking. Of course he would say that. <laughs> um, the star of Batgirl, Leslie Grace, says that there's no Batman in there. You already lost me. <laughs> you already lost me. Um, we got a, a sneak peek at Aquaman's new suit. I wonder who decided to make that change, Brian. Was it Warner Brothers? Was it Jason Momoa saying, eh, let's try something new? Who knows? And I, Andy Serkis says this venom that we're going to be seeing is going to be a love story, whatever that means. I believe he says it's a love story between the person that you are and, yeah. and it's like, it doesn't need to be that deep, man. It doesn't need to be that deep, but we're definitely going to be seeing that movie when it comes out and decide for ourselves what kind of story this is. But let's talk about the Matrix trailer, Brian. Yeah. We discussed this uh, I think a couple of episodes ago or the last episode, I, I forget. But from my pro point of view, I, I don't see or don't have any interest in this story. And from what I saw in the trailer, this seems to be, instead of Resurrections, this is the remix of the original one. A retelling from an, uh, uh, another iteration of the one or the same guy, I don't know. But there's nothing I believe in this film other than spectacle and surprises of characters that we haven't seen, new characters, but the same story. I don't necessarily think that it's going to be the same story, but it's going to be similar. We're not going to see anything different, I believe. And any different thing that we see is not going to get us emotionally where we were with the original Matrix. What are your thoughts, Brian? Yeah, you and I are on this, very much on the same page on this. You know, I, I kind of... I get. You know, I was trying to put myself in this, the the shoes of the filmmakers in the studio in this one, which is kind of the trailer seems all about evoking the past. Everything about it 
seems a almost like a, almost like Force Awakens. You know, mm -hmm. kind of was like from the very first trailer all the way through to the end credits. It was trying to make you relive original yeah. Star Wars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what that's the kind of vibe I got with this was like mm -hmm. the look, the effects, uh, that like the types of action, like even kind of like the, the the wire work using kind of like the cartwheel off the wall, like the hits were all here, right? It's like the, it's yeah. like the, the band gets back together and goes on tour and, and plays all their hits twenty years later, and. You know, from a studio's perspective, that's probably the safe choice. That's probably the blue pill, quite honestly. Yeah, yeah. But part of me feels like the greatness of the original Matrix was its willingness to go past what we had seen, to present mm -hmm. us with something, to borrow Oscar Isaac for today, truly groundbreaking. Yeah. That when you first saw the trailer, and by the way, was promoted really well, that yeah. first teaser tells you nothing it's just like yeah. what is the major like what is this but it hooks your interest yeah. i think the red pill choice would have been to say what is the next iteration of a new matrix really look like what is the what you know with the technology we have now with a storytelling could you create an almost an entirely new universe yeah out of that they don't seem to have done that and yeah. as a result, I am with you, which is I would have preferred a bigger swing at something new. And while I will certainly go, I'll go see it. Um, well, yeah, I'll go see it. I'll still go see it. I think that this is being released on HBO Max, correct? Yes, it's a day and date. That's why I hesitated. <laughs> but I said, I think I will go see I'm it. Gonna, I'm not going to go see it. But I think the other part is coming off of two and three of a Reloaded and Revolutions, which got progressively mm -hmm. worse from the first one they're not coming into this one with a ton of credibility in my eyes that like well in the way that i feel like if marvel releases a film you're like all right well i know that it's going to be at least decent yeah like, there's at least a chance this is outright bad because revolutions was outright bad in my yeah. opinion yeah so i don't know it's like i got all these familiar feelings but i didn't really get overly excited but i did see people online there are a camp of people online for whom this the nostalgia oh, yeah. seemed really powerful so we oh, might yeah. be in the minority on this i believe we are i believe we are um but the trailer seems to be uh getting people excited but i th i still think that those people aren't um like they could live without this movie if they never came out. It, they, they, no one was asking for this. And yet they're moving forward with this film, obviously, right? And um, we're going to be watching it in December, correct? Yeah, it's right around Christmas. It's actually, yes. it's after, I think it's the week after no, no Way Home comes out. <laughs> okay. I mean, it'll be interesting what the box office is going to be like. I, I, I doubt because of the day and date situation and you can watch this for free at home. I doubt this movie makes any good numbers in the theaters. We'll see. If Spider-Man's good, it's going to really make it tough because that's yeah. the same audience. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just don't see this um, turning out well for the matrix. And if, listen, if this is, if this turns out to be a bomb, that's it. That's it. You know, uh, I don't think they should attempt to move forward with making others if they, you know, but we'll see. I, I mean, we'll see in December what this movie is going to do and how people are going to react to this film. Um, I'm certainly not excited, Brian. It seems like you're not too excited about this film either. Um, but yeah, we're getting it December and um you let us know in the comment section below if you guys are interested in seeing this movie. Brian, you had anything else to add? Yeah, I just want to ask you a couple of questions about what we actually sure. saw in the trailer. So first okay. off is, um, you know, Keanu, who basically these days can't put a foot wrong. Were you okay with the look? I mean, no, so he looks like John everyone, Wick. Everyone made the John Wick comparison. I mean, the studio had to have been known that when they when they 
made that choice like why why do that when the character in the original didn't look anything like that at any point yeah i get he's aged i get you want to give him give him a goatee give him a must give him something but don't make him look exactly like john wick when is john wick is it four that's supposed to come yeah. out when is that when is that supposed to come out uh they're shooting it now i believe or they fin just finished shooting it so probably next year late next year maybe okay is it's just a, i i think is a, a a bad mistake to have him look exactly like john wick and it's just gonna is it, it, i i'm i'm just not excited for this film at all i don't think they're gonna do anything to get me like oh snap like the first matrix did but again, we'll see. Any, and so, something else you wanted to ask? Uh, yeah, yeah. Ab Ab Abdul Mateen as seemingly young Morpheus. What do you think about the decision to use a young Morpheus versus bringing back Lawrence Fishburne? And then what do you think about kind of him who's, you know, w he's one of WB's guys now between Aquaman and, yeah. and this, you know? So, I'm interested in seeing what that story is like uh, for him and for possibly um how it seemed like there was a shot where it seemed like Morphe is is being um he's going through the same thing that 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 Neo went through in discovering and being um and, and the matrix being revealed to him so I'm interested in seeing how that turns out and how um he embodies the, the I guess the the characteristics of the original Morpheus it sucks that they didn't ask Lois Fishburne, but I understand why they didn't go this route. So well, he's in John Wick as well, by the way. So that would have been even weirder. Yeah, yeah. It's like <laughs> it is. It, I mean, somebody, please <laughs> <laughs> get this man a red pill. Um, yeah. yeah. So I'm I'm with you. I am very curious to see how the reviews are for this as well, because you know it's it's interesting. The there's only one Wachowski making this um and ever since first matrix i mean just you know go on rotten tomatoes and look at sort of the reviews of, of the progression of what they've put out there it's been a rough road um yeah. you know reloaded revolutions revolutions was you know not well received and then they do speed racer also not well received um cloud atlas polarizing not terrible but not great jupiter ascending disaster these guys are, they have not, as a fan, they have not had a great run. Yeah. And this, I don't know, seems risky to go back to the well. It seems like they do. I, I, it seems like because of the success of the original Matrix, they feel like, you know, there's people out there with money, man, and they're going to take a chance on a, a possible hit, right? You can, can, you can never count them out, right? Because you, you never know. Well, it's and, the M. Night precedent, right? It's a little bit like M. Night, right? It hits big with Six Sense and it kind of goes down for a while. And then all of a sudden, he kind of saves it a little yeah, bit with yeah. kind of split in those films. But I think these guys have the ability to present a great idea. It just doesn't translate when we get the final product for some reason. That's a great um, summary. Did you, uh, before we move on, did you get a... A chance to see that movie. I, I don't know if it was called Old or something like that from M Night Shyamalan. The, la the latest one. It's his latest. I have I have not seen it. I have not seen it. Have you heard any good or bad things about it? Mixed is what I heard. Like mixed. Yeah. All right. I because I, I, I definitely want to check it out. Um. Next up. Now there has been rumor. Although rumor that is not you know, all over the place, but we got caught wind of it and there have been some discussions about it. And James Gunn came out and said, no, he is not in this, in this movie. And that is the rumor of Bane appearing in Peacemaker. Some went so far as to say that he is like the last episode with like two minutes left and he has one line and James Gunn said he is not in Peacemaker. He could be lying, but he seems very adamant that he won't appear. Brian, we've seen two iterations of Bane. The ridiculous one <laughs> and the more realistic, not 
totally uh, represent a uh, representative of the Bane that we know from the comics and the animated series. Uh, but a good take nonetheless. I'd like to see a version of Bane that James Gunn has to, you know, if he if if they do that. But do you think he's going to show up in in this? I I don't think so. What are your thoughts? No, because see, I think James Gunn is smart enough to realize that things like that steer you back toward Batman, and he yeah. does not want to. You know, remember remember there was discussion he was going to do Superman, right? That before he did Suicide Squad, that was the original conversation. But I think James Gunn in his DNA, it's not in the mainstream hero, right? That's why yeah, Guardians yeah. worked. That's why people, critics like Suicide Squad. So you start bringing in classic villains, cla that leads you to classic heroes. And that's not where I think he wants to play. So I believe him on this, that this is yeah. not, it's not also not, I mean, do you think it's something that the series really needs? I, I don't. I, I, I would say that most people don't know who Peacemaker is. And introducing Bane in this would sort of, you know, again, I don't think people really know, a lot of people really know about the, the, the mystique, only like true fans and some fans of, of, of the Batman animated series know who, know Bane, but Peacemaker to me, this was new to me, you know, again, I'm not an avid um, comic book reader, but if you're you know, making characters from the comics and bringing them to life, I, I def definitely want to take it out, check it out. It was like the boys, I didn't know. Invincible, I didn't know, but I watched it and it was great. Yeah. So, um, I don't, it definitely, I don't believe it needs it, right? And, and, and what purpose would he serve? And, and if Bane is in there, it's like you take you again. I'm not a fan of taking Batman's role gallery and giving it to somebody else. Hundred percent, hundred percent. I mean, I think like they set up. I mean, Peacemaker is set up as an interesting character in Suicide Squad. Like if you have you come in fresh and you're like, all right, Cena. I'm not sure where people stand on him, but he's definitely having a moment as an actor. Mm -hmm. You know, he's mm -hmm. in a lot of big big stuff these days, comedic and dramatic. So, and this role is kind of a bit of both. And, you know, other than, as you said, the costume, which might be a little silly to pull off episode after episode, yeah. I think they established enough in the movie, if you if people saw it, to be like, yeah, you could work with this character and use other elements of the Suicide Squad universe to make a, make a series. As I said, the most notable thing James Gunn has said is this series is effectively Suicide Squad 2. Like, that, yeah. that is at least interesting to me, like, what, where he wants to take yeah. the franchise. So, I mean, listen, if, if, if they want to bring back Bane. I mean, I don't know where you stand on this, but you know, I wouldn't mind seeing the Matt Reeves Gotham yeah. using the the actual storyline, which yeah. is Bane releasing the villains of Arkham, wearing down or figuring out the identity, wearing down Bruce Wayne, getting the climactic battle. If you even want to, you know, it's more of a TV show than I think it is a movie because it's more yeah. of a serial. You keep releasing yeah. the rogues gallery. And then yeah. if you even want to put Azrael in as season two and then bring Bruce back for season three, great. I, yeah. I, I'll watch that every week. Yeah, that, you want to yeah, put yeah, it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. I mean, that storyline is a trilogy if they decided to make it into a movie, right? Because it is. Yes. It just has a lot in there. Um, but yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of this rumor. Will he show up? Will he won't? And if he does, um, are you excited for that? Um, let us know in the comment section below. Next up, again, Andrew Garfield, Charlie Cox deny their um, involvement in No Way Home. All I have to say is this. Who continues to ask them whether or not they're in these films? It's like, let it go already. What confirmation do you need? I mean, like, you're looking for them to slip up so you can be the first guy to be like, I interviewed. I mean, like, what's the purpose of continuously asking these guys? They're not going to say yes or no. They're going to deny it. I mean, they're saying no, but we all know the truth. Brian, your take on this. 
Well, I do like that they're they're both got they're both getting more specific in their denials, right? So I think Charlie Cox had a big sort of COVID lockdown story, right? He was like, I couldn't I couldn't have fly, flown out even if I wanted to. <laughs> and then Andrew Garfield had you know, it, so Andrew Garfield did make because he he is a known sort of Spider Man fan. Mm -hmm. He did make a comment which I wanted to put back to you. Which is he kind of acknowledged the risk of at this point because the he was like, look, the hype is so much. It's in a variety article. I think it's variety. It's a feature on him and it's a paragraph in there. Yeah. And he kind of makes a reference to this thing has taken on a life of its own now to where like he's like, I just hope fans aren't disappointed too much if we're not in it. And what do you think about that idea? Like I, we're pretty confident they're in it. What if they were not? What well, at this point? Given the the hype train around this, if these guys are not actually in the movie for whatever reason, mm -hmm. how much of a downer and negative do you think it becomes for the for the for the fans as a, as a whole? I think it'll be a disappointment across the board. Whether big. I think it's big. they like the movie and they weren't in it, I, it won't be the reason that they don't like the movie. I think if they enjoyed the movie, if the movie is great and they're not in it, it'll be one of those things like them. I wish they would have been in there. Like, but it, it also leaves the, I mean, if you're getting all these characters from these different, uh, I guess, alternate realities or, you know, um, Sony's films, you know, it's like, it's easy, right? <laughs> it's easy. They're going to be in it. But if they're not in it, who knows if if the theory that we, we or the speculative speculation that we had made previously about um, this being sh a, a part one, and you know what I'm saying? So, so that's when I read the specificity of the denials. That's what I had in the back of my head. Are these guys getting clever with like? There's actually a second film here that they are in. And that, and so they're technically not lying to you when they say they're not in No Way Home, but they've already filmed and shot for part two. It's possible. It's quite possible. It's quite possible that at the end of this film, you you get a, a slap of that part two or, or part two coming, or you know, a part one. Who knows? But it's quite possible that that may be the case. But if there isn't a part two, um, they're in this film. They're in this film. Although hot um, take, I think you you and I be on the same page about this. If they're not in this film, but there is, and they are in a part two, I think that dramatically increases the odds that this is. A what? I think if they're not actually in No Way Home, mm -hmm. but there there is a part two to this, mm -hmm. and they're in that, I mm -hmm. think it dramatically increases the chances that No Way Home is an excellent film because it would mean that it's drawn oh, yeah. out. It's oh, less crowded. Yes, yeah, I, I, which is I, weird. Like yes. fans might be disappointed. We would actually be encouraged. Yes, exactly, exactly. If that is the case, yes, I want that. I want this. I want um, exposition, and I want this to not look silly in its explanation of how this comes about. So let's see, let's see. We'll find out in December. Let us know in the comment section below. Would you? Be disappointed if these guys aren't in this film. Next up, Eternals and Spider Man for um, No Way Home take place. No, it's far oh, no, from so, home. Far, so, sorry, far from home. Yeah, take place around the same time. Um, and I, I, we've had this conversation before when when we spoken about the blip and and what transpires when people come back because things aren't just normal after people come back there has to be people going crazy and people seeking therapy and because you just can't have that people disappear and then five years later they're back there's no you know there's no wrapping your head around it right no matter how simplistic they made it in far from uh far from home correct with their explanation and and um, they, I guess they're n not really talking about it in WandaVision, just showing us 
some of the chaos that 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 occurred when people just started showing up um but i'm interested to see um what transpires during that time what are they witnessing what are they talking about how are they explaining this if we get to that um situation what are your thoughts on that so it, it, when I saw this story, and Nate Moore is the one who actually who was on the Marvel Parliament who actually said this, so we can pretty much take it as fact. It, it struck me that this is one of the kind of those little elements that Marvel has to be careful to sort of address now in a way that in phase one, you know, and two in the early days, they really didn't have to worry about it because we all knew that all roads were leading to present day yeah. right it was a, it, you, you just showed present day and everyone was like all right well this is now mm -hmm. and then they explained in end game we've moved forward five years yeah. now because of that you're having to explain like okay when is all of this taking place because you've got to fit it all together it actually yeah. becomes important so like we know you it's funny you mentioned the thing about therapy so that's actually in shang chi I don't know if you saw it. He's walk when he's walking down the street in San Francisco. There are posters on the wall behind him, that. talking about um, sort of almost like PTSD therapy for the blip. So it kind of like that's a little Did way. You catch that on the second film? Yeah, Not on the second yeah, yeah. show. <laughs> yeah, when he walks down the street. Look. So my point is that's yeah. both an acknowledgement that Marvel's making of your point, but it's also a clue to like, okay this isn't pre-blip right it's it's letting you know that this is post right without actually saying it so yeah. i think it's interesting they said this movie is this, taking place at the same place as far from home which was the first movie after um end game as opposed to no way home which we assume is several years or some ways into the future so yeah no i think it's just one of those things that marvel is going to have to make sure in their storytelling like if the timeline matters which we kind of think it does in general yeah. You just have to be careful to place these stories in spots that make sense. And we've seen already, like, you know, Black Widow by necessity was sort of a rewind the clock movie. And it seems like Eternals now is actually a little bit of a rewind the clock movie. Um, so, yeah, I think that's, I think it's just one of those little things that you just didn't have to deal with. But now that you're in multiverse and you've gone to the future and you've gone to the past, you just have to keep people straight on where exactly they are. Yeah. Yeah, it is going to be definitely very interesting to see um, how much or if they do it off, not necessarily focus, but address um, that event. I'll put it that way. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of that uh, um, storyline taking place around the same time Spider-Man Far From Home took place. By the Next way, I, I read a mm -hmm. I read a really random like I talk about things I totally didn't get in Shang Chi. Mm -hmm. Some you read it online. Somebody's got like an evidence or theory that points to like Shang Chi was snapped, but his sister wasn't. Like they claim yeah. you can discern that in the film. I have no idea, but like <laughs> they claim that you can discern that in the film. And so I guess there's one other thing that people I guess are now trying to track is like who of these characters was gone for five years and who was there the whole time. So. I'm pretty sure they discussed that, man. Um, that'll be that would be interesting though, if, if later on they sort of address that. But we'll see. Um, next up, Oscar Isaac. Uh, Oscar Isaac calls Marvel's new series Moon Knight groundbreaking. Listen, if it isn't groundbreaking, I'm not interested. So this doesn't like get me hyped or anything like that. I'm already hyped for Moon Knight. A lot of people are. This is a very complex character. Um, it's gonna address a lot of uh, uh, issues um, and visually and tonally, it's gonna be very interesting to see. Um, so uh, this is not, um, you know, what he, you know, what he, I mean, you know, you'd expect him to say this thing, right? Just like uh, Robert Rodriguez going <laughs> in on on saying that the Book of Fed is 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 you, you pretty much you ain't ready for this. This is gonna be the best thing you've ever seen. 
So it was like, you know, this doesn't doesn't excite me to, you know, get even more excited than I'm already are. What were your thoughts on Oscar Isaac calling this groundbreaking? So I think that, you know, I think what we saw in, in Loki, one of the best parts of Loki was that Loki understood that action wasn't the strength of the character mm-hmm. or the series. And so mm-hmm. it, it won you over with dialogue, with, with good writing. Mm-hmm. You know, Moon Knight needs some action. We know that Moon Knight oh, yes. kind of has a, a Batman-esque element to the character. Um, yes. But I think it, it also, I'm really, the path to success, I think also is going to need pages from the Loki playbook because in theory this should be Oscar Isaac's run at an you know at an Emmy this character right you have to play multiple personalities you have to play you have to embody all sorts of disguises and characters right this is the saint crossed with Batman basically and so in theory a well-written series should be for an actor like him should be a massive flex this should be like you know, everything he's got in the bag and he's opposite Ethan Hawke, who's been obviously nominated several times, probably should have won an Academy Award. So, Mm -hmm. you know, obviously we need good action, but this is also where I'm kind of hoping we get more of what Loki was successful at, which is very good dialogue, people talking in rooms and making you kind of, you know, really drawn in to the series. So I don't know if you consider that like groundbreaking in the traditional sense, but that's kind of what I'm hoping for in this series. Yeah, I mean, you have a director that most people don't know, um, and that has um, done some good stuff. I haven't seen him, but from what people say, he's done some amazing things. And um, I'd expect nothing less. So, you know, I, I mean, I can't wait for it. this. Is coming out when? Uh, I think this is next year, right? This is this, yeah, they're done. They, the calendar's set for this year. So I think this is 2022 sometime. So they've been filming, though. I know that. So. Yeah, yeah. Let us know in the comment section below. Are you excited for Moon Knight? I'm pretty sure you are, but does this get you even more excited? Uh, let us know. Next up, the star of Batgirl, Leslie Grace, says, There is no Batman. I'm out. I'm out. I've said it time and time and again, if you do anything in the world of Batman and Batman's presence or influence isn't felt, I'm out. So I don't know how many others feel this way. Um, Again, the directors of Bat uh, Bat Boys 3 are are doing this and um, they're sort of hot commodities in terms of people wanting them to do stuff for them and direct films for them or whatever. And this could be good, but again, I'm, I'm just not interested in, and then she says something, uh, you know, Batman is not around. I'm going to get my, this is sound like birds of prey too, man. You know, and, 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 and I'm just not interested. I don't understand how you can actually live in this world with no acknowledgement to Batman. So he worded her answer as if not only was he not physically in the show, which I probably would not have expected, but that kind of like he didn't exist. And I was like, well, I don't get that because the whole the Gotham PD, the bat signal, like didn't originate with Batgirl. And if you're going to try to tell me that it did, yeah. like, I think you're really pushing the boundaries of what people are willing to buy. Yeah, if you do this and Batman doesn't exist in this world, you're going to get a lot of upset people. And this is going to go the way of Batwoman almost. So is this like, I was trying to think like, is this, does that mean this is a multiversal show where they're going to try to sell you on a world where Bruce Wayne never, like never, his parents were never gunned down and he didn't, you know, turn into Batman when he grew up. I, it just got me confused because like, I, I don't, you know what I mean? Like everything yeah. about Gotham City as a place that matters in comics yeah. stems from that family and then the sort of the the crime and then sort of what falls out from that. Mm-hmm. And I, I just don't know how you can get away from that 
I'm under the impression that she doesn't really know who this character is. And she doesn't really know the history of it. And perhaps she doesn't know what she's talking about. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. But um, yeah, let us know in the conversation below. Are you going to sit and watch this as a series, right? Or a movie? Or movie, a we think it is. Yeah, we think it's a film. Yeah. Okay. Um, are you guys excited for a movie with Batgirl? where Batman doesn't exist. Yeah, because even like Joker put a small Bruce Wayne in the movie, right? They, yeah. they, they, he, Todd Phillips understood, like, I can make this as Joker-centric as I want. If I don't acknowledge that Wayne Manor yeah. is there yeah. and Bruce is alive and the Wayne family is a thing, like, yeah. I, you know, he, he created that scene just to, yeah. to give you yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I, hopefully that is not the case. Because if if it is the case, then I'm out. I I I I haven't watched Birds of Prey, and I'm not going to watch it. So this may be added to the list of things I, I I've never watched. Well, so funny thing on that. Just before we move off it, um, we haven't talked about we haven't brought up the name Christina Hodson on this podcast that much. She is seemingly the writing guru for the DC universe. So she wrote Birds of Prey. She wrote Flashpoint okay. uh, or the Flash movie. Okay. Uh, she's written at least one or two other properties now that have popped up um, in the series. So she kind of is like the steward of this. But yeah. what's weird about that, like I said, is she doesn't have the massive hit yet in the world. Yeah. So we you know we haven't talked. No one's really talked about that, but you know, Google her name and you'll say her, her fingerprints are all over this. So I don't yeah. know exactly what that means or what we're supposed to take from that. But you know, your birds of prey analogy might be more on than you think, given the writer. Yeah. Let us let us know in the conversation below what you guys think of this. Next up, Aquaman suit, and you know, we got a new Aquaman suit. Sell some toys. Yeah, as if the classic look couldn't be so. I don't know. I don't understand. It's like I, I, I don't get it. And then you see Ocean Master looking like he's in San Francisco. What's <laughs> that? That's tough. <laughs> look, yeah. yeah, it's like what you know. It's like what's going on here. I don't know, Brian, you tell me, is this a Jason Momoa decision of changing the suit or is Warner Brothers just wanting to sell toys, as you said, or what do you think is happening here? Why deviate from the classic suit that wasn't revealed correctly? They revealed it in the damn trailer, which took all the the excitement of seeing it for the first time away from the theater experience i don't get it what are your thoughts yeah i agree i mean not only that but the the, the classic suit was in the movie for what 10 minutes tops so we're already we're already, we're already moving it in the away. closet yeah that's rough i mean i feel like you know it is a tough suit i thought they did a decent job of making what could be a very difficult suit to work. It looked yeah. fine. Like it looked, it yeah. worked on screen. I, I would have been fine with him spending the whole movie in it, and losing his arm in it. But apparently, we're exactly. gonna now. Aquaman does have a blue suit in the comics. This is not totally like out of nowhere, but you know, it does have that smell of like we gotta just resell a whole bunch of merchandise, you know, and and uh, we need it. We need a new look to do it. Um, but yeah, no, I was I was you know similar to you when I, I was almost disappointed when we saw it at the end of the full trailer for Aquaman I was disappointed to see this tweet I was kind of like I know this is meant to hype you up for the film and I kind of was let down a little bit because I'm like oh really we're going away from that mm. so soon so um you know as to who is responsible I don't know I mean I don't know Jason Momoa he does seem like the kind of guy that would be like oh you don't be cool if he exactly. exists he does exactly. have a little bit of that to him exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so it does I mean, have a little bit of that. He's the billion dollar man. He can yeah. say that. <laughs> you know? Look how long it took him to make this movie. He's like, yeah. I'm not doing this movie because I, you know, no, 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 no. 
Oh, so ocean. Yeah. Yeah. Ocean I don't know. Oh. <laughs> I mean, we, so we left the ocean master. He was headed to some kind of prison, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, it wasn't clear that he was going to be all bad in the second one. I don't think that's still clear from looking mm -hmm. at the picture, but yeah, no, he, <laughs> he, he is not master of any ocean or any house or any land. I don't know where he's been, but I don't want to end up there. It doesn't look good. In his cell, yeah. It I makes saw. Tom Hanks and Castaway look like he's been at the four seasons. <laughs> um, so I don't know. But. Yeah. I, I don't know what to say about that, but I mean, this is still a long ways off for of being complete. Um, it's a shame that, because even in, you know, for Black Adam, we haven't seen the suit and already they're showing Aquaman. Uh, I'm pretty sure that Jason Moore was like, I'm tweeting this. And everybody's just like, oh, okay, do whatever you want. It's, it's, it's a shame to be in that predicament. Anyway, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the new suit. Would you have preferred seeing the classic suit or some variation of it, let us know in the comment section below. Um, and for our final story, <laughs> like this isn't, I don't think people are gonna see this vision or this explanation or this story that you're, you're, you're he's saying that this is really about or, or has something to do with. But Andy Serkis says that Venom there's a love story between the symbiote and Tom Hardy's character. I forget his name. Eddie Brock. Eddie Brock. We may see some. I don't know, because of him saying that we're going to be looking at the movie and trying to see what he sees. But it's like watching the trailer is like we don't get i mean obviously we got to see the movie but nobody's gonna look that nobody's gonna be going into the movie looking for a deep you know theme or plot of this of this film nobody's be looking for no love story or what do you what were your opinion when he said what was your opinion when he said this I wanted, you know what I thought uh, when I read it was like, I wanted to actually hear him say it because I want to know if he was joking. Yeah. I want to know if he was messing with the person who asked him the question because I, you know, if you, if he was saying it seriously and Andy Serkis actually has a pretty good sense of humor if you yeah. have not heard interviews with him. So I don't know, but if he was saying it seriously, it's like one of my favorite things when filmmakers try to give you this deeper meaning to things where you're just like come on man it's like somebody trying to sell you on like you know godzilla versus kong having some kind of deep emotional no, no. No. you want to see them fight all right yeah, it's cool yeah, yeah. It, it's all right like you don't have to sell us on this idea you know i you know at the idea that we're gonna watch eddie brock having these conversations with the symbiote and somehow empathize with like our own internal conversations and loving ourselves and our dark side and everything like that. I don't think so. I think it may work. The, the, the trailer certainly makes it seem like that's, you know, a, sort of a dark humor aspect yeah. of this film. Um, and that in some ways is true to the spirit of Venom, like the way mm -hmm. it's written sometimes mm -hmm. in the comics. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't. I don't know that we're going to be in this movie or in the theater looking for uh, sort of the, the hoping Eddie can find inner peace with with himself. No, no. My fear, though, watching well, all the trailers that I've said to you before, my concern just remains: can this differentiate itself enough from the first one, where he fought Riot and it was symbiote on symbiote, and now yeah. he's going to fight Carnage and it's symbiote on symbiote, and you know, is Woody Harrelson being evil Woody Harrelson, you know, enough to enough new to really kind of propel this, propel this forward from where yeah. we were in the first one. Is this a rated R film? Yeah. Oh, uh, no, it's PG 13 this time. Really? Yeah. Cause there's some stuff that you see, you're like, wow. Yeah. I don't know. Let's see, man. Let's see. Uh, this comes out October, the first week of October. First. October uh, wow. October 1st. They moved it up. A few, yeah. a few weeks from now. Um, and then just theaters only, correct? 
Yep. Theaters only. This is this is definitely the like we saw Shang Chi and we want to jump in front of no uh, no time to die. And uh, you know it's interesting to see like Sony Sony having that confidence, but Paramount mm -hmm. not. You know Paramount pushed Top Gun, pushed Mission Impossible back, and Sony went the other way and said we're gonna we're planting the flag with No Way Home and Venom. We can make enough money. Yeah. The theater doing this now. I mean, what would you? What do you think about that move? paramount moving you think that just there's just too many things happening for them to find a spot and, and not having a major drop off because some other movie that's coming out the following week or whatever things that has to do with that yeah no i think you know so paramount is a smaller studio yeah. so they don't have the financial resources even that sony does like don't forget like sony makes electronics they make playstation right so yeah. there's other revenue streams there uh that you know, Paramount's a small studio. They don't, I mean, Paramount Plus is a nascent streaming service. Mm -hmm, yeah. And they don't make a ton of movies anymore per year. So like uh, the amount of money they've put into Top Gun and the Mission Impossible franchise, like those cannot fail. Like yeah, they yeah, cannot yeah, yeah, fail. Yeah, yeah. And like part of the issue, you know, I think Venom's going to have, like we talked about, like part of the reason like Shang-Chi is going to almost give you a false sense of security is there's just no competition. Yeah. You know, so it's like, Venom you know, was $800 million last time around. Like, this is a movie that when they greenlit it, they're thinking a billion. They're thinking this is a surefire, profitable hit. Yeah. And like, I hope it's good. And I think the first weekend might be decent, but like, no time to die the next week is going to hurt. There's no way that it's not going to take audience from Venom. Yeah, and it's going to be competitive in the month of October. And then you know eternals is coming you know in november so like there's going to be yeah. people who kind of would prefer to wait and get ready for that so mm. you know i'm i feel confident like i feel confident we get the releases but i don't know like how big the box is necessarily i don't think it's a layup that this is going to mirror what shang what shang chi oh, no, has no, been no, no, doing no, no, no. do you think this is a billion dollar movie without the pandemic I mean, me, no, but like I would never have thought it was an eight hundred million dollar movie the first time around. Yeah, I, I saw it, but like I would never have thought that that no, would have been no, yeah, like if you told me like I'm going to put on the table like Man of Steel, Batman versus Superman, or Venom. Which one is going to make the most money at the box office? I would never in a million years have no, chosen no. Venom, but that's the answer. Yeah. With Spider Man, it does, right? What's that? With Spider Man, it does make a billion. Oh, yeah, no question. No question. Yeah. Yeah, let's see uh, how this plays out in the next couple of weeks. We'll find out whether or not um, Venom can ride the wave of uh, Shang, Shang Chi and what it's done in the box office and people coming out to really enjoy a movie we'll see what the word of mouth is is it going to be this i doubt it's going to be the same word of mouth but will the um the i guess the quality of the film will it be on par with the the, the quality that shang chi was are you going to the theater to see this regardless of reviews i mean i can afford to make a last minute decision on this you know, if, if if it was no pandemic, I probably would have bought my tickets to see it just so that I can get a seat to, to watch it. But yeah. the theaters, when I went to go see Shang-Chi, the theaters were, were, were not packed. It wasn't sold out, but there was a lot more people than there was for Black Black Widow. Yeah, see, so, I think like I'm... I'm in a different area of the country than you are and like out here we just have so many more theaters um yeah. that it, like it just is hard to really fill up in the same way i think that 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 you you have so yeah. um it it did i agree with you it definitely was more like when i looked at tickets it was interesting especially when i looked the second time i had an easier time actually getting a seat for the first time uh, when i went thursday but when i went to go the second time there were definitely a few theaters where like they weren't full, mm -hmm. but they were full enough that I was like, I'm going to look for another theater where I can have a little more space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So with Black Widow, that was not the case. Yeah, yeah. 
Ladies and gentlemen, that's our show for today. Um, Brian, any last words? I think my last word is I'm looking forward to our future what if discussion because I think this show finally might have found a little something in the last two episodes. Been a been a slow burn. I've been pretty disappointed, but the last two, I'm like they might have finally yeah. uncovered a little something. So looking forward yeah. to talking about that because some yeah. good ideas I thought they came up with. Yeah. yeah. Um, ladies and gentlemen, that's our show for today. Um, thank you for joining us once again. Hit, please hit that like and subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. Share with your friends. And we'll see you next time on the next general report.